beautifuls, this is Aroma here and welcome back to Seduce Me, the Atomi visual novel game. Uh, last episode, oof, last episode, our mother called us telling us we had a housewarming party at our house and I had to pick who I wanted to help with, I guess. So I decided Damien. So Damien is the guy I'm going for the first route. Second route, I'm not quite sure. I'm probably going to choose Matthew. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to go throughout all the routes. So, let's start. I stayed in the lobby with Damien, who nodded to me and passed me a dust cloth. We have to dust off the railings and other surfaces before we mop the floor. Is that okay? I nodded and rolled up my sleeves, climbing into the steps of the staircase. Easy as cake. Both Damien and I began to climb the top of the stairs, wiping the dust off the railing as we went. However, a silly idea came into my mind. I looked over to Damien, wondering if he could read what I was thinking. As I expected, Damien looked over in a slight surprise before giving me a slightly concerned look. What if you get hurt? Does she want to slide down the rail? Oh, come on. It'll be fun. I did, I did, I did it all the time as a kid. Damien stared at the rail in my thought. My mind began to wander ha to how much fun my idea was, hoping my thoughts would convince him. Damien sighed softly before smirking slightly and nodding. <laughs> of course. <sighs> there, there's like an eyelash in my eyeball, sorry. I quickened my pace on the rail, dusting as quickly as I could as it got to the top. Damien followed quickly behind on the opposite side until we both were at the top of the stairs. We both then jumped up jumped up and sat on top of the rails, sliding down each each side like a roller coaster. I wonder how goofy they look to the to other guys. There was a lot of thought on the execution, but not much to stop me. Uh, watch out! Oh, don't tell me she's gonna land on him. <laughs> Our brakes had become of us slamming into each other and landing on the floor. Him on top of me. Oh, okay. Knew it. I started up the... I stared at up oh, <laughs> I stared up at him in surprise as he looked down at me in concern. Neither of us knew what to say. Uh just just laugh it off, yo. I started to laugh. I didn't know why, but I couldn't control myself. I closed my eyes and laughed in pure enjoyment of what had just happened. Damon began to laugh as well, smiling whitely as well. I mean, if she didn't laugh and push him off, the atmosphere would be really awkward. <laughs> Both of us ended up laughing on the floor. Damien rolled off of me and held his stomach as I held mine. We were both completely engulfed in joy. You were right. <laughs> that was fun. See? Seems like the guy that doesn't really have that much fun, or even know what fun is. See? I told you. Both of us curled into ourselves, facing each other in laughter before we looked at each other with smiles. However, Damon's face softened as his laughter slowly died. He smiled with happiness in his eyes and a blush across his cheeks. I stared in surprise, my face turning red in return, but my mind going blank. I couldn't stop staring at Damon's smile. Something about him was just completely charming. His eyes had a mixture of happiness and a small bit of yearning. How is she going to fall in love with him when he can read minds? He would know how she feels about him. That kind of sucks because she can't, like confess because he are she already confesses in her brain so he would already be yeah, yeah soon though damien stood up and reached a hand down to me breaking my silent thoughts <laughs> come on we need to keep cleaning boo i don't want to clean though <laughs> i slowly nodded before standing continuing to clean alongside him the hour of the house party had arrived and my mind i kept double and triple checking the essentials for the party Knowing my dad, he invited his business partners and the executives of the Anderson Company to show me off. I stood in front of my mirror in my room, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time, it wasn't. It was like, it's a housewarming party, but at the same time, father is going to be showing you off. So it's kind of like pressure, because you're his only child. So, of course he wants to show you off. <laughs> it was my chance to show my dad that it was better than his expectations than his expectations. It was a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. It was my test to see if I was re really ready to live on my own. Well, not truly alone. I had the incubi to think, but even so, I didn't have my 
dad guiding me or my mom helping me through living alone. A knock on my door broke my thoughts, surprising me. Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon, so you should hurry getting ready. Well, I'm ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. Alright. Aw, oh, she looks really cute. I love Naomi's style. It's like exactly like mine because it's like bows and pink. As soon as I opened the door to the hall, I watched as Naomi and Susan's face turned from smiles and complete awestruck stares. What? What? Dude, you look hot. Of course, it's like a burgundy colored dress. Anyone that wears that dress must look pretty in it. Yeah, you look amazing. Where did you get that dress? I've had it for a while now. Well, for a while. Okay, sorry. I just never had a chance to wear it. I figured I might as well bring it out now. I stepped out of my room and closed my bedroom door behind me as I walked down the hall of, to the grand lobby. The incubites stood waiting for me at the bottom, all dressed to the nines as proper servants. They look pretty nice. Hmm. What is this? Like, I know what it is, but I don't really dig that. <laughs> Whoa! They really know how to dress well, don't they? Of course, they're like Prince Charmings. Yeah. I was slightly taken aback on how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of a perfect gentleman, even Sam. Surprisingly, I slowly began to climb down the steps with Suzu and Naomi behind me. The boys watched as I descend the staircase, one step at a time. Oh god, that must feel like a little... <laughs> like knights waiting for their princess. I felt my face slightly flush, but I quickly shook my head to try and regain my thoughts. As I reached the last step, James offered his hand out to me and walked me down the final step, smiling. As beautiful as a princess, miss. Oh, thank you, James. How old are you? How old are these guys? I'm pretty sure they're super old because they're demons. Thank you. So, are you prepared for tonight? Not really. To be honest, no. I didn't feel confident at all. Something about tonight frightened me. I couldn't tell if it was fear of my dad or of the guests that dad surely invited. But something about tonight's party left me beyond nervous. The other boys smiled assuringly at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone to mark the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang. I gulped. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. Sam and Eric quickly rushed to the door and opened the door, double doors wide open to reveal my parents, both dressed in their best. Oh, they do look dressed in their best. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Oh, my. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. It was probably overlooked. Besides, who would deny good service? I was completely shocked. My parents didn't question the boys. They didn't ask for verification or anything. I looked to the boys and noticed Sam and Eric staring intently at my parents. Were they using their powers on them? They had to be. There was no way they'd be okay with this otherwise. I guess the servants counted as belongings to the house. My mother quickly rushed to me and gave me a large hug. I hugged her back, inhaling her perfume. It had only been a couple of days, but living away from the ones who raised me was hard. My mother soon let me go and looked at my outfit. Oh, gorgeous! You look so lovely. David, look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. <laughs> Dad's not going to say anything. I looked to my dad, who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. I stood my ground, waiting for him to look at me. When he did, he let out. He let a small smile grace his lips. Your mother's right. You look like you're all grown up. Now that I think about it, my dad has never said I was pretty when I wore a dress. But he would, he would give hints that I look pretty. Like, um, on graduation, my feet were killing me. I should have listened to Tyler to bring flats. But, of course, I didn't because I was... <sighs> graduation, I need, to, <laughs> I need to get there and be pretty. So, like, at the end of it, we were walking because it was a far walk to the car. Tyler and then Brandon had to carry me because my feet were hurting so bad. And my dad asked me if I wanted to go back to the house to get my flip-flops. But I was like, nah, F it. I'm hungry. I want to go now. And I think uh, Tyler's parents were, like, questioning me, like, are you, are you sure? 
we can go back. It's a quick stop. But I kept saying no. My dad was like, no, just let her wear that. Wear her high heels. It looks pretty. So he, he slid in, like, hints that I do look pretty. But he, he would never, like, tell me full out that I'm pretty. <laughs> now that, yeah. It makes me sad that I think about it now. The world around me stopped as my heart pounded hard in my chest. Did my dad just compliment me? On his own accord. My mother was grinning ear to ear at his words. I was beyond speechless. Thank you, Daddy. However, his cold face re quickly returned as he began to look around once again. I assume that you're ready, then, to impress the rest of the guests, correct? What do you mean? The entire board from Anderson Toys is coming tonight. Even the vice chairman's son will be coming. Huh? All of them will be measuring your potential. Are you trying to give me an arranged marriage? Because this ain't gonna work, boo-boo. <laughs> My potential? To become CEO of the company. That's a big shoes. Some big shoes to fill in, sir. I knew it. Something was off about tonight, and now this party had become much more than I anticipated. I gulped silently, but I nodded in response. I looked to the incubi, but they were continuing to be servants for my father's approval. I looked behind me and saw Naomi and Suzu raise their thumbs at me for encouragement. I let out a small breath before feeling my body accept the situation. I felt a weight in my gut, but I had to hide it. As if time zoomed forward all of a sudden, the main hall of the lobby was full of guests. Men and women in formal business attire showed up to meet me and see my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but I was once again surprised that night. I shook hands with many officials and executive members, putting on the professional face my dad trained me to have. I felt overwhelmed, but I hid it, with, I hid it well behind a small smile and, hand, and a handshake. Many even asked me questions. I tried my best to re reply as maturely as possible. I had to remember, say what you want to hear, not what you want to say. So, how do you feel living on your own at such a young age? Don't- Aw, oh, frick. That's wrong, that's wrong. I'm so sorry oh my God. about my grandfather passing away. It really hit all of us hard. I didn't... Do you have college plans? Yes, I do. I felt like the questions came up one after another. It was tough to answer some of them because they weren't about me. They were about the company. What do you think will happen with the company now that your grandfather has passed? What do you think of the philanthropic policy the company has? Uh... Oh my god. You have to like quickly like pick. I hope this has nothing to do with the game because honestly, wow. I just totally skipped the first question. Eventually the question stopped and I was back be to being myself. By myself, Naomi and Suzu were mingling in the crowds, and the Incubi were doing their jobs. So I was all alone in a room full of strangers. It was unnerving to think about, but at least I wasn't being questioned left and right anymore. Suddenly, though, my mom pushed her way through the crowd to me, bringing along someone I didn't know. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. Um, he looks quirky. Look at his, look at his hair is that, no, that's chandelier, sorry. But my mother stood a man who looked only a couple of years older than me. He smiled and held out his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Andrew, that's another cute name too. Um, it would be rude if I did not place my hand on his, so. As I placed my hand on his, he raised it to... <laughs> he raised it to his lips and kissed over my knuckles. Ugh. I felt my face burn slightly at the gesture. Andrew <laughs> smiled at me before releasing my hand. That's so... I mm, don't like it. I'm honored to be invited here. Oh. My pleasure, I guess. My mother smiled at the both of us, which made me lightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? Because they're going to make you marry him, and that's only because he has money. So, um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing me a soft fist to his lip, 
bring out a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh properly before smiling at me again. He probably doesn't even want to do this. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Are you trying to steal my company? Did your, did your family tell you to seduce me so then you can take all of my inheritance? I have been watching too much drama, sorry. Huh? Why? He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> oh, so you must be really older than me. Oh, wow. I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I looked to Andrew, who had a kind of who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off, and I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. Knew it. Blew it. I called it. I felt someone walk, walk up beside me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving his cold stare. To Andrew, who suddenly became tense. So, you're Jared's son. If you guys hear Ace barking, I'm sorry. He's probably barking because of a neighbor or something. Andrew's body twitched slightly, whether it was as fear or insult. Andrew locked eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me how fragile the air had become. Enough to break at the wrong word. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. Oh, I told you. Well... I stared at Andrew. This guy wanted to take my father's place as CEO? I thought the vice wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm merely testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wrong with that. Of course not, sir. And polite as well. Interesting. If you'll excuse me. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people who knew it. Stay put. F him! <laughs> I watched as he disappeared into the crowds towards the back of the house. I was worried, but I gave him his space. He obviously needed it. Heh. <laughs> He's not CEO material. At this time, I'm thankful my dad was here for that part, because I didn't like Andrew. <laughs> That's because you practically interrogated the young man. Mom, you're not seeing it. A little questioning shouldn't have bothered him. He's obviously not ready for any title in our company. Dad's correct this time. <laughs> I bit my tongue. I didn't want to make a scene with my dad. One wrong word and he'd lecture me in front of everyone. That was not something I wanted at my housewarming party. I let it aside before looking at the clock. It was getting close to midnight, meaning that the party was going to end soon. I lowered my gaze out the window and saw a limo pull up. Huh? Whose limo is that? Hmm? Oh, that must be Lewis's car. I'll go get him. Stay with your father so you can escort your guests out together. Who's Lewis? Yes, Mom. My mother left, and left my dad and me to slowly escort the guests out. My dad held a simple smile as he thanked each person for coming. I did the same. Andrew quickly passed the doors before I could speak. Eventually, only Suzu, Naomi, my parents, and the incubi were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up at him, a wave of confusion washing over my face. What? You did good tonight. I'm proud. Oh my gosh, my dad's proud of me. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you, Dad. Keep it up, and you'll be a good CEO. Thanks, Dad. Maybe I will. <laughs> oh, right. All right. Your mother and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Okay, Father. Oh, oh right. Yeah. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. All right? Right. See ya. Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Will do. All four of my remaining guests left the building, all of my dad waving back to me. With the last of the guests gone, I sat and sat on the staircase, exhausted. <sighs> that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Oh, Sam, shut the hell up. Give her a break, man! She was getting interrogated left and right. She handled herself the best she could. As expected, princess. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean up. 
<laughs> Sam's so pissed. Hush, Sam. Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Ho ho ho! It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. Oh god. I felt a hot shudder run down my spine. The voice from my dreams echoed through the air and into my ears. I looked around, panicked, alongside the incubi. Jaren's placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Are you sure? Are you really sure? All of us shot our heads towards the door, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight I had never expected to see. That's Andrew! Skin red as blood, eyes black, and gold piercing into mine. Roughened up clothes and a pistol in his hand, I saw a monster. I covered my mouth to not scream at the sight. Dried blood covered the bandana around his neck. As he smirked at me and the boys around, beside the red-skinned man was a similar-looking woman in matching thug-like clothes. Uh, Naomi? Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? I hoped you would, you piece of... All of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face and instantly pulled the trigger. What the fuck? We all gasped in, <laughs> in shock, instinctively expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but... What? What the fuck? Wh what? What should have been a headshot ended with a loud but empty blank shot. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling trigger over and over in aggravation. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> the man grabbed and threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple times before sliding further away, hitting the wall in a final stop. As it stopped moving, the game faded into black flame that faded into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Malix, that was his name. His existence resonated him in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked to Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. Is it possible for for humans to uh, undercover? Because it looks like Andrew. This place is protected by magic? <laughs> It would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables Hellborn magic. Malix's face grew to that, ex that of extreme anger, his fist tightening as if he was crushing a stress ball. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took that chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in a dream. Get out of my house. Leave him alone. Malik stared wide-eyed at my words. I could feel the voice of the same from behind me. Malik then smirked and leaned nose to nose. Oh my god, get that out of my face. And just who the fuck are you? I'm a princess that's gonna kick your ass. <laughs> that's none of your concern. You got a big mouth, nameless bitch. What? You best be careful who you speak to. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was my reaction, so I picked it, honestly. All of a sudden, I felt a hand grip my hair and pull it back, forced me to cry out and stare up at Malik. His eyes bore into mine as he, crack he cackled in my face. Hey, let her go! Uh, can I spit on his face? Sam! Eric! Within more s mere seconds, Sam had punched Malik square in the jaw, forcing him to let my hair go. As I fumbled back, Eric caught me in his arms, gently pulling me away from Malik's and back in their group. <laughs> Come on, Sam! You and me! Right here! Let's go! Wow, whoever voiced this guy is... <sighs> wow. That girl right there, wow. Come on, asswipe! However, before both could fight, the woman stepped forward and placed a firm grip on Malik's shoulder. That's enough, Malik's! 
What? Who do you think you're speaking to, woman? The girl who's going to help you kill them. Just not now. Not now? I stared as the girl spoke down to at Malix. She looked the same, just like the pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malix, or for me. There's five of them, and two of us. Even if we come back with the gang, they can have the place surrounded by human police. Then... We shoot everyone! Think! If we shoot everyone, we'll be hunted. And it'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come and try to exercise us. And this place is protected by magic. Did he just forget that that quick? I mean, I have short-term memory too, but not that quick. The two crowded each other. If they could have used their magic, I could sense that fire would glow from underneath their teeth. Malik grunted and stared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> oh my god, that voice sounds creepy. It sounds creepy as hell. That's when you know they're a good voice actor. <laughs> when I get goosebumps. Then Malik turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. Mm -mm. <laughs> Step outside. I dare you. <laughs> Hold on, Malik. I gotta talk. <laughs> How the hell am I going to school? <laughs> but then Malik and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? I'm talking because I'm eating um, a Laffy Taffy. <laughs> yeah, why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. <sighs> we should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malik left behind me. It's so rude for me to eat and talk behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear of his words. Malik's? Was he a demon? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. A devil? There's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know as hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order, and their power only comes from their connection to Hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. Hmm. This is also confusing. Demons and Devil and Magic all existed, and I happened to land in the middle of it. What do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. How did my grandfather know about it? What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. I couldn't believe my ears. It was a third day of surprises and this one took the cake in being the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. What did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. <laughs> I'm gonna kick his ass right now! Sam, you can't. You're gonna get hurt. Until then, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. Guys are so sweet, but uh, I don't want to get hurt, so... But what about going outside? Won't he... Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Oh. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Well, yeah. 
I forgot. I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malik's. Still, I could not help but feel very nervous and apprehensive about the future. The boys were safe here to train and become stronger, but what if Malik did the same? And this is where I am stopping, right there. Wow, this game just got even more intense. I wonder how long this gameplay is. It, it's obviously gonna be longer if I'm playing all around, so. This is actually a legit good game. If you guys have not downloaded it yet, you guys should. I believe the download link is always in the description boxes for all of my episodes. It's totally a free game. Which makes it even better, because usually the games that I would pay for, I really hated it. Because it wasn't like um, a pick a choice thing. You would always have to like, they have skills, like you have to level up this and this and this. And what the hell, it's a visual novel game. I just want to read it like a book and pick my own routes. So, if you guys, thank you, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys next time.